first of all, we cannot be silent. We need to be loud about our faith. We want to b uh, connect people with the real world because we don't want to leave people in the virtual world. Ultimate story is the greatest story ever told. It's about the life, death and resurrection of Christ. Millions of voices today. So uh, in the past, it was one loud voice and that was the voice of the church, the voice of family. People don't understand that. And the biggest enmity comes from within the church itself. But we're deciding not to be silent in places that very, very often and so far the church has been silent because it doesn't know about this. One of the things that the, the world offers is, is comfort. And people might get offended. Why are you releasing a video game on Holy Week? And every year I pray that our young people will realize the beauty of suffering, the beauty of discomfort, not to be afraid to spend time at the foot of the cross. Hello everyone, welcome to SW News. Today we're going to dive into the world of innovative outreach with MetaSaint. It is a new Roblox game that engages the youth with their Christian faith, and I have the man behind it. He is the founder and the executive director of Icon Ministry. It's a not-for-profit organization. And let's welcome Father Rob Gallia. Hello, Father. Hi, Dana. It's so wonderful to, to be here with you. Excited to, all the way from Australia, here, wherever anyone else is watching. What a blessing. And we're all so excited for the launch of this game. Thank you, Father. Father, MetaSaint is a, a fresh way to involve the youth with their Christian faith. Tell us about how this story came about, uh, MetaSaint, and what was the motivation you've had in creating um, a game that caters to the youth ages 12 to 15? Well, first of all, this is ultimately and uh, all about evangelization. It's about proclaiming the gospel. So as Icon Ministry, we get to reach to over a million people, well over a million people every year across the world, different age groups. At some of our events, we even have 100-year-old, 103-year-old at one of my recent events. And and also we have 16 year olds, 15 to 16 year olds. But we notice within our entire, especially online outreach and regular discipleship outreach that generation alpha was missing. Generation alpha is zero to 13. Now this is because generation alpha on the major part is not on social media. They're not on, um, they're not coming to events. They're the most anti-social generation ever because they're the COVID generation. So we uh, prayed about it, we did some research, and we tried to figure out where are these, these generation, where are they? And so we found that they were on two platforms. They were on YouTube, and there's so much outreach there, so much being done to preach the gospel there. Another place they are on is a platform called Roblox, which has 70 million users a day, 241 million users a month in Generation Alpha. And there is nothing credible there proclaiming the gospel so we thought let's do this we don't know how none of us are gamers none of us ever play video games but we thought we'd approach the the dubit which is the the best the leading um, game producer in the world that produces nickelodeon paramount the grammys that does lego all of this these these games on roblox and we approached and we asked if they would take on this game with us well, that's actually a good way of explaining it, Father, because if we wait for them to come to church, we would be dismayed because that will not happen. We have to go where they're at and meet them there, right? That's correct, Father? <laughs> that's that's exactly, that's exactly right. Acts 1 verse 8, you, you will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And this is what it is, that we are going to the ends of the earth, to the metaverse, to the place where these young alpha generation are spending up to eight hours a day on this, this video gaming and uh, this num brain numbing experience, they are never given the opportunity to hear the gospel. So we're giving them the entire charisma through a, an epic game, a game where they can really explore, have fun. And it's a really, really good game. Father, you are well known worldwide with your music and your preaching. Those are the fields that you have been able to saturate and many know you, and they have played key roles in your ministry and your outreach ministry. How has MetaSaint influenced the creation of, you know, th this ministry 
uh, to come up with reaching out to the youth and tell me about technology as an effective means to actually spread the gospel message? Well, I'd say, first of all, we cannot be silent. We need to be loud about our faith. And this is what my whole life is. This is what the entire ICON ministry is about. It's about being loud. And we use technology because this is a very often our platform to be loud, our platform of influence. It's using everything we have to influence the lives and the hearts of people. And also that includes our technology. Why should we say, I can talk about Jesus here, but not here. I can proclaim Jesus here, but not here, everywhere. Now, it's not to say that we're doing it on video games and are not doing it on the streets and in our churches. Absolutely, we're doing it everywhere. But we're deciding not to be silent in places that very, very often and so far the church has been silent because it doesn't know about it. Roblox, most people that I talk to within the church have no clue what I Roblox <laughs> even is. But, but to be honest, I know. had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea before we got into this. <laughs> but now they will. Father, Icon Ministry um, basically aims to touch the youth in their formative years. So tell us about how MetaSaint is going to be contributing to the mission and what is your vision and how do you hope that the youth will be impacted, highly and positively impacted by MetaSaint? Well, first of all, it's evangelization. Again, Jesus tells us to go and proclaim the gospel, to talk about him, to, to proclaim his word. And this is what principally, this is what it is. The first part, this is in three phases. The first phase is the proclamation of the charisma. So we're giving the message, the basic gospel message from the story of creation until the, the story of Moses, the birth, death, and then eventual resurrection of Christ. And this is why we're releasing it in Holy Week. And people might get offended. Why are you releasing a video game on Holy Week? But Think about it, 70 million people will be on Roblox in Holy Week, and then other millions of people will be in their churches. The churches are being catered for, Roblox not so much. So we wanted to bring the gospel on the most Holy Week to make sure that they too will get the opportunity to listen to the gospel. So that's phase one. But phase two, eventually we want to b uh, connect people with the real world because we don't want to leave people in the virtual world, connecting them with parishes, connecting them with with youth courses, the alpha course, and so on and so forth. And then the third phase is to develop apps so that we can teach the entire religious education curriculum in schools through Roblox. Well, that's great, Father. What about the process of bringing you know, this vision? I'm sure you've had challenges. Um, can you tell us, can you share with us the challenges and the successes of bringing this vision, the MetaSaint? Well, uh, I, I think um, the battle, the greatest battle is ahead of us, even though we've had a battle behind us. Um, the battle behind us is trying to figure out how to reach these young people in a relevant way for it to make sense. Because, you know, when you're dealing with a game, a lot of kids don't have the capacity to play and focus on the gospel message at the same time. But we, we've, but we've created quiet rooms, still rooms, places where they can read the scripture, reflect on, on their own lives. And so that was a challenge in development. But I think also another challenge will be, and it has already begun, is that the people don't understand. And the biggest enmity comes from within the church itself that, that sometimes is angry because it's not the traditional way of, of um, evangelizing. It's not the way they're used to. And it's not the way that can be, in, se in a sense, um, quantified and qualified. But I'm sure, Father, the Lord will give you the grace to move forward with this because this is something that will give him glory. This is something that he will be introduced to the ones who are like, who? Who? <laughs> who is he? <laughs> what does he do? You know, um, talking about the challenges, you know, uh, there are critical factors in the youth engagement with uh, influences with Christianity, you know, uh, their Christian faith. Uh, how do you address that, Father, in your own ministry as well? Like uh, there are just millions of voices today. So uh, in the past, it was one loud voice, and that was the voice of the church, the voice of family. Today, they've become a small almost uh, a, a, a insignificant voice in the world, a world that seems also irrelevant. So we are in no way in doing this, trying to be cool and relevant. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to give the basic charisma in a language that people can understand, to give them a fair chance. Because I think a lot of these young people are losing their soul 
are losing their soul. And, and this is because they've never give, been given a credible opportunity to hear the gospel. And this is simply what we're trying to do. It's not to be one of the voices. We're the same voice of 2,000 years ago, the very, very same voice. But we're just communicating in a language that these young people today can understand. And what is more difficult today is that, again, these voices that are so loud in the lives of, of these, um, these young people are so confusing because there is no truth, there's no objectivity, everything is subjective. And so we wanted to try and bring this age old truth in a way that was that's in a way that they can internalize at the uh, the alpha generation age. Yes, that's that's correct. Now, talk, talking about Holy Week, can you give us insights and reflections on the significance of this penitential season um, in regards to the Christian faith of young believers and those who are still in ex exploration part of their Christian journey? I think one of the the biggest offerings of this world, one of the things that the, the world offers is is comfort. It offers a lot of comfort, offers a, a, a lot of um, running away, pacifying the pain of life, pacifying the things that are of, of value, that, that suffering, pain, um, a dis-ease in life. And I think this is a very, very something very missing in the lives of young people, the, the capacity to look at suffering, to stare at suffering and to embrace suffering. To look at it and and to realize its transformative power, its redemptive power, and this is one thing that I'm hoping that even every year I pray that our young people will realize the beauty of suffering, the beauty of discomfort, the beauty of staying in the empty tomb, even when you're not hearing anything. Today we cannot stay in empty tombs. We'll pick up our phone immediately the second we're bored, the second we 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 we're, we're slightly um, not entertained. We just cannot be still. And I think, again, this is what Easter has to offer us, the Easter week, that stillness, that silence, but that silence in an, an emptiness of hope, sitting in the tomb, sitting in that place where we're face to face with suffering and death, but knowing that that suffering and death will bring us life. Ah, that's great, Father. Um, in regards to your hopes and aspirations for your ministry and your outreach efforts, Father, um, tell us about what your plans are for MetaSaint uh, down the road um, and other initiatives that you have in your ministry, as well as your mission of positively impacting young people all over the world to know who Christ is. Well, at the core of Icon Ministry is a desire to proclaim the gospel. We will do it in any way, in, through any means that we find credible, relevant, um, opportune, any opportune moment we have. We'll go to schools, we preach at conferences, we go and we um, work through education, we work through gaming, we'll work through exercise, any way possible to proclaim the gospel. So how I see it in the future ultimately wherever a door will be open even a door that has never been opened before because this has a, this was an example of a door that has never been opened before but we're going to knock at every door to make sure that as many people as possible with every breath that we have get the opportunity to hear the word of god and how much god loves them amen and father we wish you all the best i'm sure the lord already sees the end of the, how this will flourish and will touch the lives of the youth and how they will feel so alive so father thank you so much for sharing the beauty of your initiative the meta saint and we wish you all the best in all your outreach ministry everything that you're doing father one word describes it evangelization so we, we, we actually say thank you to you by wishing you all the best in your efforts. God be with you, Father. Thank you. God bless. Take care, Father. Thank you. God bless.